the turkey's wing bone. This is the middle part of the wing bone. This is the part that goes against the body. I don't use the tip. We eat the whole turkey, so I save the bones and I put them in the freezer until I get time to mess with them. Here's what we're going to do. The one that goes closest to the body, there's usually a hole right there. I'm going to cut it an angle just above that hole. About like that. See the porosity in it? That's what you're going to see when you cut it open. Just above that. Trying to get rid of that indentation right there. We'll worry about this later. Uh, we're going to try and get two out of this. So this one I'm going to cut close to that knuckle. Right about there. Now we're going to kind of eyeball. Let's see. The center, because we're trying to get to the inside diameter of the bone is kind of tricky. You're trying to fit all these together, so probably a good idea to just make one, but you want to save everything out of the bird you can, so we're going to try this. We go. Now we're going to take the center section of the wing, pull it apart. We want the biggest bone out of the center section right now. We're going to look at that inside diameter and looks like it's going to work. So, Cut the ends off longer than we need it. And then we're going to cut it in half. I got the ends cut off. Now we're going to try to cut it right in half. Now, this is a gobbler. You can see the two videos where I shot these gobblers. I shot two. If you go to my hunting playlist, you'll find them pretty easy. One of them was a Jake, one of them was a big gobbler. Jake sound better, hens sound better than any of them. There's something about hen bones, they're a little smaller, I think maybe a little thinner. And now we got those two pieces and those two pieces. Now for the small bone of the center section, we're going to do the same thing. There we go. We've got the small bone of the center section of the wing. We've got the bigger bone of the middle section of the wing and the large bone that goes against the body. This is the toughest part of the job probably. Is this right here. I need to break that up without breaking that thin bone. The rest of them, there's marrow inside of them. You just take your wire or something and work it back and forth. Try to get that out of there best you can. Put a little hook in the end of the wire and shove all that out of there. Break it up, and then our next step, it should come right out of there. There we go. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Most of it's out of there. We'll get the rest of it later. Like I said, these are the hard part. I'll probably have to use a screwdriver real gently and break some of that up, but we'll take everything out of it as well.
Now, as you get towards the sides of the bone, it's going to get obviously harder to get that out of there. Stop at that point because as you can see, that bone is really thin right there. I actually chipped that one by mistake. Got a little rough with it up in there. This one's probably the hardest one, the smaller one. It's the hardest one to clean out. But I'll show you what we're going to do next. It's actually easier to get that out of there after you boil it and bleach it, but you can't get all the dirt out of it as good. So uh, I'll show you what we do next. Right, since it's hot outside, I got me some uh, water in here put Dawn dish soap in it after I put the water in there and just stirred it with my finger so I didn't get a bunch of suds. We're just going to drop every one of those in there. We'll try to float if you don't clean that marrow out good sometimes. So we're going to put them in there. We're going to let them soak. Kind of like sun tea. Get a little bit of the grease out of them, soften them up a little bit. Now, it's been sitting for several hours, 95 degrees out here in soapy water. What we want to do is try to find the smallest hole that we got. I took some trapping wire. Hopefully y'all can see that. I heated up the tip of it, smacked it with a hammer, then I bent that tip over so that I could get down in there kind of like a dental pick and scrape every last little bit of that out of there that I can and then we're going to boil it now you can see already that the gristle and stuff that's left on that it's a lot softer now we've rehydrated it It'll come right off of there. This takes a little bit of work. We've got uh, that one there. It's already fell off of most of it. Take this little brass brush. Don't get carried away even with a brass brush, especially after you boil it. It'll leave colors and marks on your bones. But just reach up in there. Take your time. See that right there come out? After we clean them all out, clean them all off, we're going to boil them. Okay, as you can see, there's a slight curve to that middle piece right there. Right there's where the wing feathers were. There's a curve in this piece. I want that to fit down in there. Now if you're going to make one call, it's easier to get that to fit tighter than that. But we made two out of the same wing, just trying to save stuff. This one has a slight curve to it, but it really doesn't matter because the fit's so loose. But we want something, if I can get it to fit, something like that. The end ends, the indigenous people they used to wrap it with sinew. Uh, some people used pine pitch, all kinds of stuff. But when they got done with it, they would rub rendered fat, you know, moose fat, bear fat, just anything on there to keep it from getting brittle. So it looked a lot more yellow than this. Um, as you can see, I left some of the structure, whoops. I left some of the structure up inside the bone that helps support it. You don't have to, but you can see that's really thin right there, and I don't want it to break. But the thinness is what gives you some pretty good sound. And if you leave all that in there, I've done that before, it kind of, sort of, acts like a guitar. You've got little strips of wood inside of a guitar, helps the sound. It changes the sound. You can get different sounds. The longer that call is, it changes it. The shorter that call is, it changes it. It's pretty interesting stuff, but I like a short call. I've only ever killed one turkey with a wing bone call, and it was the most challenging thing I've ever done, probably. <laughs> I'll show you a picture.
All right. I lost some footage because somebody was playing some music nearby and I don't want to strike for that or whatever they do. I don't know. What I done was I boiled these bones. I scraped the inside out more with my scraper and I sun bleached them for about two weeks. I did not bleach them in bleach, but you can. You use peroxide diluted with water for 24 hours. No more than that or it'll get really, really brittle. And I don't like brittle. I've already super glued this one together to show you an example. Now the indigenous people would use pine pitch rendered uh, sinew, all kinds of stuff. They'd decorate them. And uh, pretty cool little thing to make a turkey call out of a turkey wing bone. And here's some that I haven't put together yet. That's the other half. You can just make one big long call if you want to. Changes the sound according to how long or how short. Changes the sound according to how much of that cartilage you leave inside of there. I left a little bit. I like to keep it a little bit traditional. And I had to slice off little slivers of bone and sand it a little bit to get this piece to fit into this piece just a little at a time. The uh, rest of them fit pretty loose. I don't mind that. You can also use dental floss. Wrap it like you would an eyelid on a fishing pole. You can use colored threads. You can do just about anything you want to. Sprinkle baking soda in there and put super glue on it to really stiffen it up and cover it however you like. Decorate it however you like. A lot of folks like to use India ink and do some drawings on it. Things like that. But there's a turkey wing bone call we'll show you how it works here in a minute now what I've learned is this been 20 years or so since I've used one of these I didn't like learning how to use one of these I wore a blister over here and I wore a blister over here for me it's not easy but I tapered the tip a little bit what I used to do was hold it like a pipe rotate it this way put it clear down where my lips touching it I pinch these two fingers right here to help adjust where my lip goes some people put a little kisser button on there like you would for a bow so you can tell exactly where to hold that I'm not very good at it anymore I think you get the idea, hopefully it comes across on camera. Seen an old guy at a show one time, he gobbled with it. It was a big long call, it sounded better, but hen bones sound better than gobbler bones. I got something to do with the thickness of them, I think, or the diameter or something. This is one of the gobblers I killed this past spring. You can go check that video out if you want, but I'm gonna practice a little more and drive my wife crazy. And thanks for coming to Owls Outdoors. We love you. Always share your fire.